Hey, TJ, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Well, thank you for coming back for part two. Uh, so I know that we touched on a couple key points yesterday, and then you introduced yourself. And uh, I, I did want to touch on a little bit more about Loretta's. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Loretta Lynn did pass away last year, and I know that's going to take a hard hit on the motocross community. But do you see Loretta's ever going away at all with that happening? Um, no, not really. I mean, that's she's got so many fam, so much family, like you know, grandkids and stuff. Like they gonna keep that going. I mean, as long as you know, it's a Lynn in the family. So I know uh, when her death announcement was made, you know, seeing all the motocross community, you know, posting pictures of their bikes in front of the gates. And stuff like that. That just, if that don't touch your heart, just to them giving a big shout out and a thank you to Loretta, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, that was a beautiful scene to be able to see that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, that's one good thing, you know, it's about the motocross community. They, they always come together, you know, in a time of need, even uh, before that, you know, that's, that's something you can always really count on. Yep. You know, a few years ago, they got hit by a big, big flood and basically had to rebuild everything that's been there since day one, man. You oh, know, yeah. The community came back together and got it done. Um, What's your thoughts on <clears throat> Supercross right now, man? I mean, what what's your thoughts on the points? What's Tell me what you're thinking. I mean, it's good. I think so far it's the best it's ever been, like, we, I know a lot of people say that every year, but, I mean, me personally, I think it is. Like, how everything's going competition-wise, like, it's sweet. I mean, I'm I'm digging it, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tomac, man, you know, this this series is about the future. Man, what's his future? What, what do you see – how many more years do you see him racing? It just depends on where he's at, you know. I mean – Mentally, he's got a family, and like physically, I think he's he's still there. He can be there for several more years. I mean, the dude's an animal. Um, and I mean, me personally, I hate. You know, it's crazy. Like now, he's on Star Yamaha, and it's finally clicking. And not to say all those years he had with Cowie was bad because he won a lot of championships and a lot of races. But I mean, I think those are some years that uh. It could have been done differently to where he could have, you know, dominated a lot more. Like, he was dominant in outdoors, not so much a Supercross, but, like, now he's, like, in, in a dominant stage when he's at a stage where he's kind of, like, ready to hang it up and, you know, spend some time with his family. But, I mean, it's just all in how they feel. He may he may say, hey, I want to stick around a couple more years, or he may say, hey, this is my last year, I'm done. It's just all in what you feel. I mean, when you do it your whole life, it can go any way, you know. You do it as a kid from the time you grow up. It takes a toll on your body. You don't get a lot of family time. You don't get a lot of time to yourself. It's, I mean, when you're at that level, time is dedicated to your craft. So, I mean, he's young, and he's made plenty of money. Well, when, not let me say – I'm not going to say plenty of money. You can never, never make too much money, but he's done extremely well for himself. So, I think he sees it like, hey, he can – get out healthy and young and still live a good and healthy life and raise his family. So, yeah. And, and he still has the speed to, you know I mean? And, and he's proven it. He still has the speed to be a contender all the way up through the season and be within the points. <coughs> uh, what about old kickstart Kenny? What do you, what, what may, do you think he's regretting going to Suzuki? You know, you see a lot of these posts about him stalling out in practice and having issues with the kickstart. But then you see other posts and he's loving it. Well, what's your what's your opinion on Ken Roxon going with Suzuki this year? Honestly, I think it's just all about comfortability. I mean, me personally, I don't think the kickstart is that big of a difference maker. I mean, things can happen with electric start. You know, they cannot start as well. I mean, for the most part, a lot of the time you got to, like, try and find neutral just to get those to start Yeah, with an electric one. Just like you do a kickstart, you know, you got to go to neutral. It's just it's just all in preference and comfortability. You know, I'm pretty sure he could, 
he'd have been a, been comfortable on, on a lot of other bikes, but he rode Suzuki for the majority of his career ever since he was a young young kid. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's just one of those things. He likes the bike. He's comfortable on it. Yeah, it's going to take some time, like, for him to get it redialed back in. He spent, like, five, six years on a Honda. So, I mean, he, he adjusted that bike, although it may not been – he may have had some, like, times where it wasn't the best, you know. But, I mean, it, this is, it's like any other bike. In order to go fast, you got to be comfortable, and it's going to take time to find that comfortability. And They're getting there. You know, he'll get there. It's just one of those deals. He's, he's been through a lot. So yeah. he's still willing to put in the work and the effort. So that's all that really counts in my book. Yeah, I mean, and you look back and you see all of his injuries and stuff, and they were pretty consistent, and it started to scare me, and I'm sure it scared a lot of his fans too, but he's definitely proved his fans wrong. And, uh, Chase Sexton, man, he's really, really made some big improvements this year and definitely is a standout to me. Do you think he has – the potential to take that red plate from Tomac. It just it, it just depends, you know. It's, it's it's one of those things. Like he's young, man. You know he he's in the 450 class early. You got to think he he came out of amateur ranks with like Fortner and guys like that. So he's really in the 450 class pretty early, and he's still it's a lot to learn, you know. I mean, he's out there racing. I mean, speed wise, yeah, he's there. Speed wise, no doubt. But it's just going to take a lot of, you know, the, the mentality, staying headstrong, you know, and being able to put it together like every race, the entire race. I mean, to me, that's that's the ultimate difference, you know. Tomac, it's when he gets out front, yeah, he he puts it together mentally and physically, and you know, he he keeps it together for the whole package. That's and it's just going to take time. Like Chase will learn, you know. His time's coming, you know. It's just one yeah. of those things. Tomac's a veteran, and Chase Sexton is in a sense, but he's still partially in a rookie stage, you know. I know they consider one year being a rookie, but, I mean, when you got Tomac and guys like that, I mean, there's still a lot to learn. You got Cooper Webb back there as well, so it's just one of those deals. Yeah, and big shout-out to Cooper Webb, man. I mean, he took some time off last year. I mean, he, he even raced some of the local tracks in North Carolina. And, you know, he, he just had the baby and stuff. And for him to come back from taking the season off to focus on family, but he was still involved with motocross. I mean, he he really surprised a lot of people. And, you know, he is a local guy, so we got to give him some love for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's uh, from – I want to say Moorhead City or Newport, Newport, North Carolina. I think it is. Yeah, I can't remember. I know, I know he's from. He's he's a good buddy of mine. But I mean, he's a hard worker. You know, he's he he came up from the struggle and the grind, so he knows what it's like. I mean, when he when he wants to do something, he does it for himself. He don't do it for nobody else. Like if he wants to go win, he's gonna go out there and give one hundred ten percent win and, and win. So yeah. that's that's one thing I really like about Cooper. He no matter what, he ain't. If he's laying down, is because I ain't gonna say laying down, but if he's not riding to the expectation of himself, it's because it's something else. It ain't really, you know, nobody's fault. And he'll yeah. be the first to tell you that. So Yep. Absolutely. Um let, let's get into some uh a little bit of the local stuff. Um I got a couple more tracks I want to talk about. Iron City, you know, back in the day it was if I'm not mistaken, it was an area qualifier. Yeah, they had like two years, two years in a row they had an area qualifier there. You know, and a lot of people bash the track because, you know, it's only race on it twice a year. They don't run full track. But, I mean, it, it all comes down to the commitment of flaggers, too. You know, we want the safety of the riders to come first. Oh, yeah. But, you know. And if we could get some people out there to really work and be involved with the series and be committed, I mean, I couldn't – I see us extending the track some more. You know, when you did the renovations this past uh, June or July, I can't remember when it was, but a lot of people were happy with just making it bigger. Do you have any – thoughts as to what could happen with that track in the future 
I mean, honestly, it just all depends, you know. Um, like, it's like, like I say, it's hard. Uh, of course, like to say, start off with safety is the number one thing, you know. Chris isn't gonna, you know, put anybody in harm's way if he doesn't have the crew to make sure it's safe. That, that yeah. that's one thing, you know. And uh, I understand people want the bigger track. I mean, a lot of people love the track. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like the track at all. That's just me personally. I do not like yeah. it. But people do, and it's it, it's just one of those deals. Yeah, I could see it being extended more. I mean, I feel like yeah, it does need to be extended. But it's also it goes back to safety. Like it's hard to get the you know the personnel and staff to run that race. You know, and especially with it being the inclines and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a big. Tra- it's a lot of area to cover. It wouldn't be so bad if it was like, you know, Kathy's or 221 where you can kind of see everything, but with the hills and how everybody want it because it's like it gives you that kind of outdoorsy, outdoor natural type feel because of the hills and stuff. You yeah. got to have the people, the personnel there to cover all that area. And that, that's why mainly why it got cut down from the get go. And, yeah. it, you know, it it took some time and some effort. Like, you know, I I did that renovation and like uh, – seven hours six seven hours i did that it didn't take me long yeah but it can definitely you know be extended out more like i mean it'll be i trust me like i've already laid i've laid it out several times and went over to chris with it if you know eventually on down the road if we could he probably wouldn't have a problem you know extending it back out but it's it's super hard to get people to commit and go on somebody's word to be there to say they're gonna help flag you know yeah. And then you do all the work for them not to. Yeah, not not only the flagging issue, but the work, the track prep that goes into it. I oh mean, yeah, the incline of those hills. I mean it, it. It's it's really really. It's a big track, man. Oh no, it's definitely a big track. It's cool too, man. Don't get me wrong. It's it's it just takes so much. Like a lot of people don't realize too. Like when they first did it, they put literally they lined the whole track with a sprinkler system. I don't mm-hmm. think a lot of people realize that. There's probably over 400 sprinkler heads out there. Oh, yeah. It's, all, it's lined around the whole track. So, I mean, and it's tied into the city main, so you can just turn, hit hit buttons and turn a valve on. Yeah. So, I mean, if you if you go change it a whole lot, you got to go tear a bunch of that out. And, like, we got a, we got a blueprint, but it just – to do it, we got to do that. We got to switch a, a lot of the plumbing to where it won't get hit. So – when you turn one section on, it ain't spraying the water truck road so you can't get up a hill with yeah. a water truck or something, you know, to hit some of the spots that sprinklers do miss that you aren't covering when you change it. So it's it's a lot that goes into it. I mean, but it's just one of those things. It's like I said, and then again, it goes back to work. We're so busy at work, like we got to get the time to get over there and, you know, having three different tracks to maintain for, you know, just of your own for your series is a lot. So I mean, it's it's almost like, you know, we try to do one track at a time, but, you know, he, he don't want to shut – he don't want to, like, get away from it and, you know, let it go to bad because that's the one thing you don't want to do is have tracks closed down. We want to see more tracks, not see them go away. So, he yeah. just – you know, Chris just done, did something temporary, like, you know, shorten it up to make it feasible to have people still come and ride it. A lot of people may not like it. I get that. Yeah. You know, people may come far away, but, I mean – it is better than not having the track at all. Absolutely. <clears throat> a lot of tracks are shut down. Uh, not just tracks that you race on, but also uh, tracks that open up for open practice. I don't know if you remember. Uh, I think it was early 2010s, but do you remember TNT and Union? Yeah, Union, South Carolina. Yeah. And it was around for a while. It was. And they got it for sale sign up there and, you know, honestly, it kind of concerns me as to why nobody bought it. I mean, I understand there's a lot of money that's going to be put into that track, and it takes money to run a track like that. Well, I I don't know if it's true or not, but back in the day when I I, I didn't I never went, I wanted to go, but I think a, a main reason they didn't because it didn't have like, and of course it takes a lot of work to get dirt good, but I heard the dirt wasn't really that great. It was super hard packed. It was, and so. I mean, like you, you can fix that. It just it takes time, man. You know, I always say I, I tell a lot of people you got to think if you go 
to a track, and, and I'm not I'm not knocking any track, but you, you you go to a track that doesn't have good dirt, good terrain, and it's it's that way for X amount of years. It takes just as long to get it that good as it did for how long it was bad. So if you got a bad surface for eight years, it's gonna take eight years at least. You know, I'm gonna say four years to get it good. Back, um, yeah. yeah. And you know, and, and being on that subject, uh, Top Gun, when Warren bought it first of the year last year, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and I'm like you, I don't want to hate on any tracks or any kind of facilities, but it was really, really hard packed. But throughout the season, this is like every time we went, it, it was getting better and better and better. And he's he's really put the time and work into that track. And I'm I'm looking forward to the future of that track and what it holds. Yeah, like that, that and a lot of people that one too, people don't realize. So I raced it back in the day a lot. And they had uh, uh people don't realize it only reason it was so hard packed because they couldn't rip it but so deep because water land water lines ran under that track. Mm-hmm. So it it like of course like if you only go an uh, inch deep, it's going to blow off and get hard and harder and harder and blue groove and it, it's not going to be good. So yeah. he he came into that like when it wasn't great and it takes time. Like you know he they, they that family put a lot of time into that track and a lot of money and you know, it shows they're in it for the long haul. But yeah. it's one of those things. It, it, like you say, it does get better. The more you work it, the more you ride it. It's going to get better if you put the time into it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and he made an announcement a few months ago about how he's doing private track rentals. And I did a rental two weeks ago, I believe, on Saturday. I get there, I get there in the tracks, frozen over, and he just gets out there, don't even hesitate, rips it again, gets the mesh out there, and turns us loose. And, and I mean, the track just turned prime. But... Anyways, is there any shout outs you'd like to give before you head out, TJ? Um, yeah, of course. Always gotta give a shout out to uh Chris Fortune, Fortune Graden. You know, without him, definitely wouldn't be able to make it possible. Um, yeah. my guy Zach, Zach Newberry over there in Period of MX. You know, we got our podcast, we do our thing over there. So definitely check us out over there in Period of um uh Jess and Eddie over at Next Level One on One, the whole next level crew. Um, and basically just everybody. Oh, and Pac. Punk ass kids got to got to always think about that. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yeah. Just uh, other than that, that's about it, man. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of not one but two days to, you know, be on here, and hopefully we can work together in the future, and you know, have multiple podcasts. You know, my mine's going to focus mainly on more of the local stuff, but you know, we'll see where it goes. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Wish you all the best, dude. This it's always something to talk about for the local scene. Gotta get a local guy's love. You know, we try to focus on them too and shine a light on a lot of guys that don't get, you know, the notoriety that we feel is necessary for them. But I mean, I feel yeah. like a lot of these guys that's local are fast and you know, uh, it's a lot of local talent. All it and always will be, you know, they just don't get they don't get the recognition because like I said before on like part one, I have nothing against training facilities, but you know, it's it's something that's really hurting racing and without local tracks, racing wouldn't really be where it is, you know? So yeah. you, you, you don't, you don't, the people, I mean, you ain't going to get enough people to go to nationals. That's going to support the love of the sport to push it like the local scene does. So that's how I look at it. Yep. Well, well TJ, I really do appreciate it. And uh look forward to seeing you out there at Captain's Creek on March 11th. You know, you know it, brother. I'll be out there on the gate. So hopefully I have a good, healthy season. You know, I've seen a couple of the local guys go down pretty hard here lately, and it's got me thinking. But at the same time, you know, if you want to chase your dreams, you got to chase it. You can't. You exactly. Can't that. Exactly. So, all right, TJ. Well, I do appreciate it and look forward to talking to you again. All right, bro. All right.